Hey traders, today we're gonna do a basic market breakdown. I wanna show you how I'm doing my analysis to hopefully help you make better trading decisions going forward. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few different currency pairs. We're gonna start with Euro AUD, talk a little bit about some divergence here, and then we're gonna shift into a few GBP pairs. But if there's something that I don't cover in this video, if I leave you with a question, make sure you comment that below. Whether you're watching on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, doesn't matter. Make sure you comment the question down below. I will be sure to get back to you as quickly as I can. I wanna make sure that these videos are actually making you better traders going forward. If you're new to the channel, my name's Austin, I appreciate you being here. Do me a favor, if you do find some value in this by the end of it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and it lets me know that we're moving in the right direction here. The first thing I wanna show you is Euro AUD. This goes back into last week. We go Wednesday, Thursday, and then into Friday. I just wanna show you the divergent bottom that I liked to see it use as support for a move higher. And when we found a really solid break and retest, especially through the 50 EMA, but also through the key price level at the Asia high, you can see the break, retest, and then even a second retest, that breakout here, I really loved even that to see it come higher. And just notice, the divergence is set with the RSI rising and price action falling, right? You, that is where your difference is. This is moving lower and this is moving higher. And with that divergent, that difference, that's where we look for some potential reversals. Now, the bottom set in, it's confirmed here with that test right outside the Asian session. These vertical lines here, if you don't know, excuse me, horizontal lines, that's my Asian session high and Asian session low. And you can see, without me circling it with this annoying purple marker, you can just see because of that line, the retest to that bottom, to that support zone. So with that retest, with the break, the second retest off that break, you're starting to see strong confirmations for a move higher. Now, this can translate into long ideas on the 25th here, last week, or it can translate into long ideas the next day on the 26th as that trend continues. What I do think it can be more powerful even for is then coming into the next week using the divergence it's now created on top to then take it short. And why I say more powerful is because if you're able to use divergence kind of like a wave, kind of like a guide almost to your wave, then you can go long and short currency pairs even in the same week. So you could have been long here on Euro AUD last week, Wednesday into Thursday into Friday, and then come Monday into Tuesday of this week, here's Monday and here's Tuesday, you could be using that divergent top to signal to you when it breaks, just like it did on the bottom, when it breaks here, showing us that we're okay changing bias under the 50 EMA, showing support to the 50, showing support to the 50, showing support to the 50. You're getting an A1 entry right here off the 21 EMA. That's ASFX bread and butter stuff right there following that D2 idea off the top. So it's interesting to see that translate into an idea to start the month here with a short idea following the long idea on, like I said, Wednesday into Thursday and into Friday. Now, you can take the short idea yesterday that ended up working and even carry that over into today. And you can see, once we set the bottom yesterday, it broke that level during the London session with a very strong bar. And where did it move today? Following that same trend. And notice in that move, where did the TDI stay? under the 50 value. See that horizontal line, that dotted line, that's that 50 value. Staying under that value really does make a difference. Let me turn my screen pointer on so that helps you guys too. So that's what I'm looking at here on Euro AUD. Now going into the rest of the week, I'm going to look to see if 154.15 is our bottom and we start to move higher only because if we go to the higher time frame, like let's check the one hour, you can see basically it's hard to see here actually on the one hour, but this is in an overall uptrend. If we look at the four hour, I believe it is. Eh, it's kind of changed now after the drop. It's now looking more bearish. Check the daily. Yeah, it is looking bearish. So it is not in an uptrend. So going into the rest of this week with that divergence still on top, sending us lower, you would think we should continue to look for short ideas. And that's just riding this the basic trend that we see. If I can get my marker here, you can again see that entry here, support here, support is now here. If we can come up to that level overnight and maybe use it for a move down, that wouldn't surprise me. I wanna also show you kind of similar analysis, but opposite direction on GBP CHF. Now, if you go back, I have a trade recap recently on GBP CHF because I was buying this two weeks ago. Had I held that position, it moved up like 600 pips from that position long. Now, last week on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we saw it slow down and start to pull back. So coming into the week this week, we don't want to necessarily buy into the idea that because it pulled back Thursday and Friday, it needs to go lower Monday and Tuesday. We want to go to the higher time frames and keep in trend. And if you look at the higher time frames here, you can see on the daily time frame, it's been holding the 8 EMA so well since the start of the year. So clearly in an uptrend there, 
four hour, very, very similar, holding the eight EMA, TDI in the buy zone. So when you get down to it this week, yes, we had that pullback on Thursday and Friday, but it's really just showing a healthy pullback in the overall uptrend. So coming into the week yesterday, I was looking to buy this. I was looking for longs. It ends up breaking out past the Asian session high here at like five o'clock, 4.45 in the morning, right before I got to the desk. And that was the push higher that set the high of the week, Monday at 6.15 and that's New York time. From that high set to that breakout point here, when we broke out of the Asian session, that was our zone. Overnight, we used that zone as support for a move higher to that same resistance zone like I showed you we found yesterday. Now sitting in that resistance zone, but continuing to make higher lows off this bottom, that's telling me that we are going to continue to look for long opportunities Wednesday, Thursday, and probably Friday this week. We're not gonna call the top on an uptrend when you have all three higher timeframes in agreement on the direction. I would not feel comfortable trying to look for D2 shorts here. I'm gonna be much more inclined to look for D1s or A1s that break out long at least for now. If that trend reverses, things can change. But I want to stay in trend as long as I can, just because I know that even if I'm a little early or a little late there, I'm probably going to make money because the trend is on my side. Going back to the divergent stuff, I want to show you something on USDJPY. You can see this moving higher over the last couple of days, and you can see really clean support. Like you can see from the 24th into the 26th of last week, which was like Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday into uh, Wednesday into Thursday. And then into Friday, you can see that zone set as a high, tested a couple of times, used as support to then show resistance here at 106.38, 106.40. It trades between there, using that as support to move higher. Now that we've broken that zone at 106.40, we use that as support here in the Asian session on uh, Friday, which I like to see. And then from that low Friday, it continued to make higher lows. So then coming into the day today, we're going to keep that long bias. You could have come in this morning during the Asian session, really it's last night for me, and you could have been looking for longs here off that zone. It doesn't reach all the way to the zone, but you can see that is the top. It's then broken for the first time here. It retests and moves higher through it, retests off of it, off of it. Now, if we can hold above 106.65, 106.65, 69 if we can stay above this zone overnight we'll continue to look for longs but what's important is that we don't get locked into just looking for longs because if we do some analysis we can see our highest rsi point is over there on the 26th if we match that to price action and if you don't know how i'm drawing this divergence please go to the new traders start here playlist and watch the divergence training it's on my channel or go to the divergence training channel uh, playlist on my channel. I have two playlists that'll really teach you a lot about divergence if you're not in the ASFX courses. So this divergence on top tells me that now that we're under the 50 EMA, remember I was just showing you on Euro AUD, now that we're under the 50 here, right there, and we retested it, if we want to hold under this 50, it's going to continue, it's going to continue moving lower off that divergence. And we're going to continue to see it making lower highs and lower lows. It'll really be important to see what it does here overnight. If it can hold 106.60, I think we continue up. If it breaks under 106.60, I think we're going to see it move lower. I want to take a second and just remind you guys that today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. I know I forget to mention them in some of our videos, but it is an important sponsor to me because the privacy of our data is becoming easier than ever to be compromised. Surfshark helps protect me, my information, my passwords, and it covers all of my devices. So they've hooked you guys up with a great deal, 30 day free trial, 83% off and three months free. It's unbelievable. I'll put the link on the screen and in the description, make sure you take advantage of that. But past Euro AUD and GBPCHF and USDJPY, what I've also been looking at, if we take a look at GBPJPY, is seeing how the JPY correlation works on UJ versus GJ. Because I want to know, is USD controlling the USD JPY pair? And is GBP controlling the GBP JPY pair? Or is the JPY controlling the movement? When you line them up side by side, you don't see a high uh, level of correlation in my opinion, which allows me to find opportunities on the opposite pair, even though they would look like they're correlated based on the JPY. So when I see GJ here on uh, Friday looking sideways, Monday looking sideways, and then again today really kind of looking sideways with no clean trend, I can still go look at UJ because I know they're not directly correlated. Oh wait, you guys can't see that. Sorry about that. Hold on. Here you go. On GJ, you can see yesterday and today sideways, but I can still go to UJ and look and see that moving in trend. 
UJ moving up yesterday and overnight last night. So don't get too hung up, especially on quote pair correlations. Base pair correlations, yeah. If UCHF is moving up, look, off the 50 EMA overnight, UJ is going to do something similar off the 50 EMA at the changeover. So those base pair correlations, I think, are stronger than quote pair correlations. That's what I'm noticing. Just something else to pay attention to. Look at this GBP NZD pin here. Just a lot of volatility at the end of the day. And I think what that is from is just because you do have some news coming in overnight on the Australian dollar. If we look ahead to tomorrow, you can't see any NZD news coming in overnight. So I do think you're seeing the volatility because of this GDP announcement, maybe. It could have also been because of the NZD building consents month to month being so low. I'm not really sure, but that volatility there is interesting to me at 145, 2 o'clock. No, I'm sorry, 1245, 1 o'clock. So that's not really when that news was. That was over here. It looks like maybe that comes on the FOMC statement. It can't be the GDP. GDT price index because that was at 10 o'clock in the morning. So just some unexpected volatility there with those large, large pins. I mean, that's, let me see, I'm gonna measure. 135 pips. Those are not small, small pins there. And then I want to show you one more thing here. GCAD. So again, a lot of volatility, but when you come in to start the week yesterday here, this is Friday, this is Monday, this is today, this is Tuesday, it's March 2nd. I was looking for long opportunities underneath the 50 EMA. But if I was paying more attention based on the analysis that we were doing, I could have actually been looking for shorts following this D2 idea. So we've talked a lot about D2s today, the reversal idea using divergence. This is something that we teach in the advanced divergence course. So instead of looking for longs here, I could have been seeing this as the break, the retest for the move lower. And I could have been looking for shorts in here with a stop loss here to ride this move down. That's the D2 idea. Now, of course, I give you a lot more information in the courses on how to spot this and how to identify it. There's a whole checklist to use and to show you exactly where to put your stop. But that was something that I saw from yesterday that I think we should keep as an idea into the rest of the week. I think we should still look for shorts right now because that top seems to be very strong. And I think this could be a structure level that we might, you know, maybe break above a little bit, but still use overall to move lower. So that's my analysis on a couple of different pairs. I don't want to rant too long for you guys. I want to keep it as short and sweet as I can. If there's a pair that I didn't cover that you want me to cover, comment that below. If you have any questions about what I discussed or how you can learn about the ASFX systems more, there's going to be links in the description for that. And also make sure you guys are using your ASFX trading journals. I'm getting a lot of good feedback from those, especially as we go into a new quarter. It's important to be documenting and analyzing yourself for growth. And don't forget, document your winners and document your losers. Don't overlook the losses, guys, because that's where we find the most growth. So let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, if any of this analysis was confusing, I'm always here to clear that up for you guys. I want to only help you make better trading decisions going forward. So if this video did bring you value, like I said at the beginning, just make sure you subscribe and smash the thumbs up button for me. I really appreciate the time and I'll see you in the next video.